According to Electronic Arts, each and every one of us has a need, one that is apparently so great that it requires constant sequential nurturing. Since 1994, EA has been generously answering this need, pumping out an endless supply of spin-offs and reimaginings of the venerable Need for Speed franchise. From mobile devices to current consoles, countless versions of NFS are available for your perusal. However, there's never any guarantee that you'll encounter a worthwhile experience. And that's the biggest problem with this long-running franchise. Ultimately, it raises the question as to whether EA's endless venture into diversifying the brand is a noble objective or an indication of a complete lack of ideas. Occasionally, they do get it right, with recent spin-offs like the simulation-focused Shift and the contrasting more traditional gameplay found in Hot Pursuit. Unfortunately, however, more often than not, they get it dead wrong. Need for Speed returns in The Run, a typically rushed collaboration of famous car licenses, a sexed-up marketing campaign, and shallow gameplay. Inadvertently, The Run describes the appropriate response that one should follow when they encounter this game. Keep running and do not look back. Meet Jack Rourke, a classic cocky waster who's managed to wind up in a whole lot of trouble. Jack's indebted to a connected family, and now, as is customary, they want him dead. Luckily for Jack, he's one of the best street racers alive, and as chance would have it, he's been offered an opportunity to clear his debts and ultimately save his life. Jack is tasked with winning the run, a 3,000-mile race from San Francisco to New York. Although the premise of the story is fairly original, a number of disjointed cutscenes endeavor to bolster the plot in between key races. Undesirably, the majority of the somewhat over-the-top cutscenes are burdened with annoying, needless quick-time events, as the run shamefully abuses the use of QTEs at every given opportunity. Press Y here, repeatedly tap A there, the interaction does nothing to enhance or dramatize the story. Instead, due to a number of poor design decisions and a horrendously short campaign, we're left with a rush idea that suffers from a lack of execution. A prime example is the rival races. These random events are introduced without any prior explanation, often without even a cutscene. Two additions which significantly increase the overall appeal of Need for Speed The Run is the decision to include Criterion's ingenious auto-log system and for the game to be powered by DICE's Frostbite 2 engine. The former tracks your friend's stats throughout the game, updating you with information of their latest and greatest times. It's a fantastic social tool which breeds competition, urging you to go faster than ever before in a quest to beat their times. The autolog system ties in with the challenge series mode, offering the opportunity to beat your friend's times in specific challenges as well as online opponents. A traditional experience system is also in place with rewards and EXP points awarded for a specific action or completing races. It should be noted that if your friends don't have have the game, the relevance of the autolog feature is pretty much useless. This game is strictly an arcade experience. There is no sense of realism bar the licensed car models of which there are a surprising number to choose from. It's all about getting to the end of the race in one piece as fast as you possibly can. Whether you're hurtling over 100 miles per hour down a stretch of highway, blazing past opponents with your pedal to the metal and a tank full of nitrous, the run can be an enjoyable experience at times, but this happens far too infrequently, marred by truly dreadful handling, rudimentary gameplay modes, cars feel overweighty, and concept of cornering is just bizarre. All of this is confounded by the need for quick reflexes and the crazed AI. Before each race, the player is awarded five opportunities to restart from a checkpoint before having to try again. Resets can be lost by veering slightly off the track or by wrecking your car. Many resets are lost simply due to the unpredictability of your AI opponents, especially the police. Cars will swerve violently into each other for no reason, causing you to unfairly lose a life or halt your chances of catching your opponent. You will try Try and try and try and try again. Rather than battle your way past 200 opposing cars that comprise the run in one single sitting, Black Box decided to cordon the game into a series of separate challenges, which consist of making up time, gaining designated number places, rival battles, and battle races. Each of these segmented challenges provides an extremely shallow experience, comprising around three to four minutes of gameplay apiece. 
Frostbite 2 engine needs no introduction by now. The engine behind the glorious Battlefield 3 returns, though the result isn't as prominent as you'd expect. The environments range from the snowy hills of Colorado to the bright lights of Las Vegas, though each stage feels worryingly similar despite the different aesthetics on display. Cars are accurately detailed, with the impressive lighting model enhancing the city and rural environments effectively. There's a damage model included, which is complemented by a raft of destructible scenery and a convincing slow-motion burnout-esque wreck cinematic. The overall impression isn't as remarkable as expected, with a disturbing amount of screen tear, plaguing cutscenes, and a slight fuzzy appearance overshadowing proceedings. Nonetheless, Need for Speed The Run is aesthetically pleasing enough. The first 15 minutes of the run is quite enjoyable, however quickly, close to the finish line becomes an unbearable slog. There's definitely room for a dramatically improved sequel, as the idea, although flawed in execution, is an interesting one. Regrettably, we're left with a disgustingly short campaign, horrific load times, and a mediocre story. And that's a shame, really, because after your two-hour ride, you realize that Black Box's solid idea quickly ran out of gas. Despite what EA might have you believe, you really don't need this speed. <laughs>